you don't decide to go and hope that God follows you. You wait and see where he's moving and you come into alignment with his plans, not the other way around. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. This is day 31 and today we're going to be covering Exodus 39 and 40. In Exodus 39, Aaron's garments of ministry are created and the tabernacle materials are completed and brought to Moses. In Exodus 40, Moses sets up the tabernacle, the priests are anointed and the Lord's presence descends on the tabernacle. Brilliant, mate. Um, well, before we get started here, I'm going to go back to something we were chatting very briefly about towards the end yesterday of Peter's imperfect pieces. Uh, because I was, while I was waiting to do this one, I was like, you know what, I'll show you it because I like showing people stuff. So uh, these little things I've been making for my sister, right, for her wedding is these placemats. And I'm making them out of epoxy and wood. And I'm really so freaking happy with them. But the reason they're imperfect pieces is because I ran this one through the planer. And it's <laughs> a massive chunk out of it. So I was like, right, do I try and fix that? The bottoms aren't there. It was pretty. I just showed people the tops. I was like, do I, like, do I try and fix it? And I was like, nah, sack it. It just makes it one of those imperfect pieces, doesn't it, really? So I'm quite happy. I like it. You can see them, uh, you know, showing yeah. down those things. I think it's a really thoughtful gift. I think it links to what you were saying yesterday, 100%. And I actually like the little chunk that's been taken out of that one. The imperfections almost make it more charming and stuff, man. So there you go. Yeah. But then, you know, that really does add a lovely context to what you were saying yesterday about the fact that these people are doing these things in the sweat of the desert with no power tools perfectly first time. Um, I was more going to finish with this point, but it links to what we're saying. The fact that they managed to erect the tabernacle and the furnishings and everything in such a quick amount of time, it's in like less than one year that they managed to achieve all of this is like freakishly fast and supernaturally fast. And it again, just shows God is blessing them and giving them what they need and guiding their hands. You yeah. know, it's just fantastic. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you knew exactly how long it was. Um, I figure we haven't had something that's been above our pay grade in a while. So uh, <laughs> that might've been, but then you said it was a year. So never yeah. Mind. Yeah, yeah, I remember reading that it was a year from uh, of them in the wilderness by the time that they had finished all this, which is just amazing. Um, it's also just good to see the Israelites being faithful and doing as God commands for a more sustained period of time, because, you know, he makes the, God makes the covenant with them, and two minutes later, they're dancing around a golden calf, aren't they? Yeah. Whereas here, you know, Exodus 39, 42, the Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Fantastic to see this. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it is seriously impressive, and it's the same thing I've touched on before, but it is exactly as God commanded, like everything in its place, everything is the right size and dimension and Moses inspects it. And it's like, it's as God wanted. And yeah, just, it's really cool. And then, you know what I love then, and I'll sort of segue into it, how uh, the, the presence of God descends, right. We're getting into 40 now. I think we might need to go back into 39 to talk about Aaron's garments and stuff in a minute, but mm -hmm. um, the presence of God descends and it is just this real physical visual thing that you can see. And it's just this amazing, again, one of those, they've seen this all around and they've been following uh, or they've, they've experienced the, the cloud and the fire in the past, but now it's just mm -hmm. there dwelling in and on the the temple that they built it's like that ultimate you take your piece of work home show your parents and yeah. they're like good job <laughs> he's like wow god's in the thing that i built yay <laughs> that is so cool to think i hadn't thought of it like that but i yeah i just love the constant assurance that god gives them by physically being present the whole time yes. and i love the fact that um exodus 40 37 it says if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So through that presence, God is also guiding them of when to move, when to stay, what to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the fact, like you said, it's like the ultimate reward for their hard work yeah. is, is just so inspiring. Um, put their piece of work on his fridge. 
<laughs> before they before you touch on the different colors of Aaron's robes or Aaron's robes, I will always say Aaron just to be clear. Um, Exodus 40, your mate Aaron, if he ever watches these, is just going to be like, yes, I get it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Exodus 40, uh, you had already said how things are like very orderly and perfect and how everything is in its place. Mm -hmm. I noticed that too. And I said, uh, for, for me, I felt that the fact that everything is so orderly in place also echoes back all the way to the original Garden of Eden, the mm -hmm. fact that everything was perfect and in its place, because it's where God had set it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also noticed there were mentions of uh, the, uh, bread, for example, and things like that, which to me side to point towards Jesus absolutely and I think I mentioned yesterday some of the tables and the way they're described kind of makes me think of the Lord's Supper and the Lord's table the table to sit and have the Lord's Supper and those sorts of things so just these signs towards Jesus and the New yeah. Testament yeah that's that's very true I want to just uh just jump back briefly into the presence of God and how he moved and like you said would go ahead of them and it, it reminds me a lot of, uh, we were chatting I suppose, a few weeks ago now about how before Jacob went to Egypt to meet with Joseph, he prayed about going, even though it's such an obvious thing. And it's just this whole, again, you don't decide to go and hope that God follows you. You wait and see where he's moving and you come into alignment with his plans, not the other way around. Because believe Absolutely. it or not, he's God, we're not, um, <laughs> really? like to think otherwise. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Um, but you did mention briefly about, uh, going into Aaron's, um, ephod and breastplate and all that stuff. And I'm going to be brutally honest with everyone. I, I wasn't finding a lot to say about today. So I Googled it and I was like, what's the symbolism of this? And there was a dude called pastor Putz Evans. Um, shout out to pastor Putz. He puts <laughs> um, right at the beginning of, of chapter 39, the priestly garments from blue, purple, scarlet yarn, uh, all these things that were made. And he gave it and he said that basically the gold stuff that was mentioned is in relation to the deity of God. The blue stuff that's mentioned is in reference to heaven. The purple stuff that's mentioned is in reference to his royalty. The scarlet that's referenced is in relation to the sacrifice and the blood sacrifice that's given. And then any fine linen that's mentioned in here, because those are the things that it's constantly sort of in and around that. It's in relation to the righteous acts that are done and the righteousness that we're supposed to live with. Mm. And then on top of that, the 12 gemstones that is on Aaron's ephod thing, I thought, well, surely there's going to be something in that with all the stones. And he didn't mention anything specifically about that. But what he did say was the reason there were 12 is it was to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So every time Aaron, Aaron went into the presence of God, he was representing the 12 tribes of Israel as well. Yeah, that's and really cool. It just made me go, ah, cool. I see that now. Yeah, that is really cool. The one that struck me more than any other, well, there's two things that struck me, I suppose. One is that you've got to always remember, you know, almost all of us are literate in 2021, you know, but back then literacy was incredibly low rate. So it was very much a case of people would have to hear what was being told them, not be able to read it themselves. And also sort of what they see and what they experience would give them more insight into into the mood and the vibe of the time right um so the fine linen to me i just love the idea that that represents righteousness because imagine you're in the sweaty sandy desert of their lives and you have this lovely smooth soft gorgeous linen that you can see and touch and, and experience mm -hmm. and how how that kind of I can see how that links to righteousness because it would have felt like a small piece of perfection. And then just the bold colors to help them remember these big concepts, God, gold, kind of the most valuable, precious thing that they see, right? Blue heaven, blue skies, right? Yeah. He's up there somewhere. And sacrifice, scarlet, sacrifice, yeah, blood. I remember seeing that lamb getting cut and whatever. Yeah. Like this, this is, it's really important symbol, symbolic stuff, but it's, it's, you know, if you can put yourself in the shoes of the Israelites just for a second, it, it makes so much sense why this is so important. It's massive. Yeah. So we're pretty much at a close there, but I did want to say we're just, you know, we're pushing into a month into this podcast now. We're actually going to be heading into January soon. I just wanted to encourage you really and anyone who's been listening to this, if you've been affected by this, impacted by this, if you have a testimony, please message, please email about it. And why not encourage somebody else to be joining on this for the beginning of the year? 
So any questions, visit the Facebook page Two Brits in the Bible. And please consider liking and subscribing to help spread the word of God.